That's a pretty decent ball on the line I was aiming. And on a decent ball flight. Yeah, today we're going to be looking at the tailor-made SIM drivers. I've got the SIM standard and I've got the SIM Max. And we're going to do some real testing out on a course, Conway Golf Club, real conditions. And a uh, bit of wind, a bit of sunshine, a bit of dry ball data at the end. And then I'll tell you what I think of the SIM and a SIM Max driver. Shape in motion, they call it. Sounds like me on a Saturday night on a dance floor. But maybe not. Yeah, so it's a SIM and a SIM Max and quite a big story. And like I mentioned at the end there, SIM stands for shape in motion. But what does that mean in terms of technology? What does that mean in terms of bowl marketing claims? And uh, ultimately, what does it mean to an average golfer? Well, first of all, let's see what Taylor made is saying in terms of what spec is inside this club, this 2020 driver. Now, whether you like it or not, marketing claims are always going to be there. They're always going to be bold and there has always got to be a story. And uh, the sim story is uh, quite an interesting one, shape in motion, like I said. And it's all about aerodynamics and ultimately increasing club head speed throughout the swing. Because what Taylor made a saying is that most club heads have been designed for aerodynamics through impact. That flat part of the swing when we strike the ball. But ultimately, the club head travels in a number of different positions before it gets to that, uh, that flattened out part of the swing. And what SIM has been designed to do is be more aerodynamic throughout that whole swing and ultimately produce a faster club head speed, faster ball speeds, longer distances, everything we want from a driver. But does it do that? Well, we'll go out on the course and we'll, uh, we'll test it, as I've said. And I've hit a number of different golf balls in a number of different positions, in a number of different conditions, and none as nice as today. in the sun there, you can't see them. Yeah. Good Very good, that one, There's two products, three products actually, but two products I'm testing. I've got the Mac and I've got the standard product, but there's also a D-type, which is the draw bias. I just start with a max first of all. I found that draw bias enough. I find it quite shut, a bit of off, quite a bit of offset, and I struggle to get the ball going anything bar left. If I'm perfectly honest with the max, underneath both clubs, you can see that CG is placed extremely low um, and and back, and really going to help in terms of uh, launch angle. But they do claim they've got a nice balance between um, launch and maintaining still a low spin number, which is a good combination. And in the sim product itself, I found it much more favorable for me in terms of a driver. The performance was really good, both in terms of dry ball data and in reality out on the course. And I've got to say, it produced some numbers that is as good as anything I've tested in terms of dry ball data. But out here on the course, it was a real good performer. Played out in a wind just a few days ago and it really got the ball motoring. It really goes off the face quite hot. Really impressed with this, I've got to say. Just talk about the looks though, because the one big deal I've got, I think underneath shelf appeal, first of all, I think it's a bit of a Marmite product. I actually think it looks, I like it, uh, but I do think it's going to split opinion. I think it looks as though it's well made. It looks as though there's a bit of effort gone into it. And yeah, I think it looks pretty decent. I love the colouring. But it's from the crown where things are quite a bit different. 
If you look at the ball at address, this is something that I struggle to get my head around because they've used this kind of uh, gloss um, outer rim on the crown, which I don't know what it's been done for. It's kind of like makes the club head look a little bit smaller, but also changes the shape and almost elongates it a little bit. And it very much changes it on my eye and it almost, I don't know, again, visually sort of closes the club face a little bit. And I struggled to get it sort of square at address in both products. And it's something that I had to get my head around. It's something that I had to work with. And it was not a natural sort of sat behind the ball and, uh, and squared itself up, if you like. So for me, there's issues there. But in terms of visually, I love the grey colour that they've used. And this gloss grey is, I think it's stunning looking. And the muted matte pattern in terms of that carbon crown, again, looks fantastic. In terms of twist face, we've seen it all before. We're expecting fast ball speeds across the club face. But as ever, you know, I mean, you've got, it's your swing that ultimately will uh, determine performance. And I think if you look at the first clip I filmed at the start of this video where I talked about finding the fairway, I hit four balls off that same tee with two, uh, both drivers. Two found the fairway, two found the rough. They were okay to be fair, but ultimately, don't forget, our swing will determine where these balls finish up. And there are no magic ones still. In terms of um, the shafts, I tried a few different shafts in both heads, and I've got to say it's a real important thing and highlighted the difference because the hazardous smoke shaft in the standard SIM product performed really, really well for me. And this Fujikura Ventus shaft, which I've heard very positive things about, it just didn't work for me, but I think it really highlights the fact, again, that you've got to be trying out different shafts and you've got to be custom fit for these things. Overall performance, like I said, from trying it on the fairway, from trying it in terms of dry ball data, it performed, and I'm going to talk about the SIM products, that's very much the one that uh, I focused on. It was as good as anything I've tested in terms of dry ball data, and out on the course, to be fair, it's going to be top end in terms of price. They've really gone in again, 479, I think, is the list price, so it's top end. They ain't going to be pleasing people with that kind of price tag. All I would say, if you're in the market for a new driver, if you want to spend 500 quid, it's right up there with the best that I've tested. I can't argue with that. For me, on a personal level, there's a few little nuances in there which I'm not 100% comfortable with, and mainly that one looking down on it from above in terms of the crown. Performance, though, I can't argue with it. It did really, really well indeed. So like I said, if you're looking for a driver, then give it a go. Right, that's me done and tested. I'm going to do plenty of head-to-heads because I think ultimately shape in motion has got to be put to the test. And we need to see how that compares to other drivers, how it compares to previous models. And then we'll determine whether the marketing claims from TaylorMade are right or wrong. And there's only ways to do that, and that's dry ball data, I'm afraid. Anyway, it's a gorgeous day down here at Conway Golf Club. I'm going to carry on hitting some golf balls. And uh, thank you as ever for watching. And I'll see you all soon if you don't get too bored of these product test videos because there's a ruck of them going around at the moment.